I don't know if you remember back in the day, there used to be huge wall hangings with, uh, with quotes on them. And I remember this particular quote because it was hanging in my grandma's house. And so every time you see when you started reading, you'd see it there. And I never understood it until way later in life that sometimes you need to be aware of the opportunities that are coming your way. You need to be ready. So when the teacher appears, you are ready to receive. So when an opportunity doesn't knock, you need to build a door. And this is tied in with the conversation, the very first conversation of the day. We started out this conversation with Dr. Wale yesterday all about execution. When you have the right mindset, then how do you go ahead to execute? It's time for Advice Circle. Dr. Wale, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm very, very well. And you are in red. Thank you. <laughs> I told you. You are a man of your word. But somebody was arguing that this is not... Yes, my director told me that what you're wearing is not red. What you're wearing is maroon. That one is over much wahala. <laughs> not today, not this early in the morning. No. <laughs> Made red and red it is. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Yesterday, uh, you, you said that today we will be talking about procrastination and that people who actually do that, they believe that they have control of time and circumstances, which is a huge lie. It's a deception. And I think where to start is in the book, The Art of War. Sun Tzu says that good fighters put themselves beyond the possibility of defeat and then wait for an opportunity of defeating the enemy. And that's why we dealt with the things we dealt with yesterday, fear, capacity. So you package yourself, get yourself ready. But it's possible to have dealt with all that and nothing happens due to some internal enemy. And you see the enemy within is um, the most dangerous and the most deadly enemy any human being has to contend with. If you don't deal with the enemy within, the enemy outside will destroy you. And of all the enemies a person can have, one of the most deadly is procrastination. Listen, no one opens the door of his house for a thief to come in and carry out all he has. But people do that every day with procrastination. And procrastination does not just steal what you have. It is the thief of your future. It's the deception. You think you're in control of tomorrow. Listen, so you make plans for tomorrow. Today is what you have. And one of the traits of, I, I read a lot about successful people and all that through history. One of the traits is to act or to bring things into your terrain of strength. You know, in the battle between a lion and a shark, the terrain will determine the outcome. So never make plans based on things that are out of your control. And if you must, realize you do not control the conditions. Ride the waves of conditions. A good surfer must be able to catch the right wave. That's not luck. It's called timing. Many people don't make decisions when the opportunities show up because they've deceived themselves to think the opportunity will always be there. And that's one of the, it's, it's, it's a lethal thing. You see, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. Every dream has a shelf life. Every idea has a shelf life. In fact, I dare say every life has a shelf life. So what is the shelf life of your current state in life? What is the sell-by date of the current dream or opportunity before you? If you do not proactively take charge and get into the driver's seat of your life, you will be taken to a place you never planned to go. There's a Nigerian proverb that says, no one can know where your back is itching like you. Similarly, no one knows the dream in your heart like you. And if you do not act 
on the opportunities before you today, you will wake up one morning thinking it is still there and you realize it was for a moment and it has gone. Then it gets very, very sad when you see someone else take that opportunity and make something out of it. You know, there's a story of this guy who always wanted to make an album back in the day when Mandela was in prison, always wanted to make a Mandela album, you know, talked about it, talked about it, talked about it. And finally, when he got around to, okay, let's do this, he got money together, went to the studio. Those days you had, it was not like now when you can have one person do all your programming. He hired a whole band, hired everybody, you know, took a loan, did the album. You know, in those days in Nigeria, album launch was a massive thing where you recouped your money. But between the time he went to the studio to record and the time of the launch, guess what? Nelson Mandela was released. Oh. <laughs> so that's where we really wanted Mandela. We just wanted to make a buck. And that's why I say, you know, step out. It's better to fail at something than to succeed at nothing. All right? Opportunities have no owners. They are free for all situations. Who will who are who, waiting for who will see them as such? But opportunity never waits for procrastinators. The procrastinator will never experience what people call luck or favor because luck never favors inactivity. Every human being, and I know what I'm about to say now is going to get some people offended. Every human being has had at least one opportunity in life to change their story every human being but they were robbed not by the devil but by procrastination and let me prove this to you think of the times everyone listening now should think of the times you talk you, you you thought of something you had this great idea and you were convinced you know this thing is going to be if i do this thing it's going to be awesome but you kept thinking 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 you never did then later on you are watching tv and you see, somebody has done the very thing you were thinking about. It has become a success. And the only thing you now have is the stories you are telling Mumu friends just like you that, you know, I'm the one that thought of that thing first. You know, I thought of it before this guy. Listen, uh -huh. the person who's it's irrelevant, who, the, what is important is who executed it. Life does not reward who thought of it. Life rewards who executed it. What a lot of people call luck is sometimes nothing more than a person who seized opportunity. And the magnet of good luck is a life devoid of procrastination. And then let me wrap this together. Sometimes procrastination tries to disguise itself as being prudent. Uh, it manifests as over analysis. You know, we give look instead of sitting down and over analyzing. It's better to make the decision, act on them, and then begin to make changes slowly. Progress is a function of acting on decisions, not of a function of speculation and over-analysis. Two hungry lions see an antelope that is within reach. They decide they are going to go for it. The decision to go alone will not fill their stomachs. It is the action that does. A decision you think you make that you do not act upon was never made. And the quality of your life is going to be determined by the quality of decisions that we make and act on. So what are you afraid of? The cure for fear is confrontation. Confront it. Many fears develop, like we've said before, because of past experiences, negative news from other people, you know, but don't let your past rob you of your future. Take let me tell you how to, you're going to go about this. Take one step today, one step in line with where you want to go. It might be, I'm going to read one chapter of a book. I'm going to write one paragraph of something I've always wanted to write. I'm going to take my phone and record a video of myself and put it out there. I am going to send out those applications. I am going to register for the street university. If one step, I'm going to make that phone call. One step, then you know what? 
Once you've taken that one step, take another step. Then once you've taken the other step, take another step. You know why? Big success is the product of taking many small steps. Just be consistent. Because the end result of any consistent effort will be exponentially greater than the effort. Change does not happen because you did something once. It happens because you continue to do it. Success and failure are the offspring of habits. And so tomorrow, I'm going to take it from there, how to now build winning habits to kill procrastination. What? Wally, all your lines and statements are just powerful. <laughs> you don't know what which one to pick and which one to... Before I'm done with this one, the other one has hit me. Before I'm done with this one, the other one has hit me. <laughs> but it's always interesting to listen to what you say. I read somewhere that when you think, if you are like a, a constant procrastinator, when you decide that you actually want to do something about it, breathe in, before you take that little tiny step, step, be like one, two, three, and just do it. Just do it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be good. But you did something towards what you want to achieve. And that is all that matters. That today you did something. One small step. And the beauty of the small step is this. Each small step you take will energize you for the next step. So a lot of people are waiting for Oh, I need all the power, the energy, the psych to go. No, each step gives you the psych for the next one. And that's why we start with that small step. Today, I've authored 18 books. I have a column in the newspaper. I do all that. But you know what? I started by going to a cyber cafe many years ago and just sending out my thoughts. Because I have always been thinking of all these things and so I will send out my thoughts as emails to people. That is how it started. Going to a cyber cafe, pay 60 shillings for one hour to send out my thoughts. Who would have known that by going to that cyber cafe, my world was going to be totally transformed? Just one step. And sometimes we look at the opportunities that we have and we procrastinators mostly have this thing of if I had this, then I would have done this. If I had this, maybe if I had the finances, maybe if Wale was my father, if Wale was my mentor directly, if I had his number, you know what I mean? So you have excuses left and center that are holding you back, that you're telling to yourself. And that ties in with what you just mentioned earlier when we were starting this conversation, that procrastination is a thing that you do to yourself. You let yourself down. This is not something that you'll say, Nani did this to me. This is what you do to yourself. You know, the challenge is a lot of people, why they actually procrastinate is because they want to start they don't want to start with a bicycle. They want to start with a Range Rover, you know? And that is where the problem comes. You know, um, you got to look inwards before you look out because in everybody is the seed of their greatness. The seed of your greatness is not an external thing. It's an internal thing, you know? So you look in. For me, it was writing. You know, um, when I was, and I think I've said it, one of my teachers told me when I was in primary school that if you continue writing like this, one day you might be paid to write. My teacher was prophetic. It's always been in me. I've, I've written over a thousand songs. You've heard some of my songs before. Yes, I've written, I have. Writing is in me. How do I get it out? My lowest level of implementation. You know, because I said, okay, lowest level of implementation was 60 shillings. You know, 60 shillings, I did not need too much faith to get in the early. So 60 shillings a week was my investment. And here we are today. Uh, someone says, morning, Mikali, I hope you're well. Thank you for that. But when do you know that you your opportune time has hit or is here? That is an SMS, a question to you. A very good question is the same way, um, you see, you have to 
every day prepare yourself as if you are expecting your opportunity that day. So a day will come when something shows up that you are, you, you are prepared for. And that's why people talk about when opportunity meets preparation. Something shows up that you are prepared for and boom, that's how you know. It's not that you are going to look, where's my opportunity? Where's my opportunity? No, you just be building yourself, be developing yourself. It was not in my radar that I would write for the newspaper. I didn't think of it. I just wanted to write to get my thoughts out. My wife always says that if I had no expression or no way to express the thoughts in my head, I would have gone mad long ago. You know, my, my wife told me, she said there's a thin line between genius and insanity, and she does not know which side of the line I fall. You know? So I always had that in me, and I just kept writing and went out there. Then next thing, I'm called somebody based on reading my articles invites me to come and speak at a major conference that opened me up to the world. Then I was invited based on, you know, in those days, emails, you forward, 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 the way we do WhatsApp today. That's how it was with emails. Somebody read it and said, you know what, forwarded it to somebody. I was invited by a newspaper to come and write and have my own column. It was not in the plan. You know, somebody read it and then I was given an appointment somewhere. It was not in the plan. Ready. The only thing I had in my plan was just right. And so I was preparing myself and I was doing, I was starting at my ground zero. And when you start at your ground zero, the person that will take you to the next level it is based on your activity at ground zero that they would, you know, there's a story in the Bible. Jesus would see people, he say, follow me, follow me, follow me. And, you know, that's how he assembled his team. Then he saw a particular guy, Nathaniel. He said, Nathaniel, I saw, he says, behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. That, a, a perfect man. Who doesn't want that kind of person in his team? Jesus looked and said, you're an Israelite in whom there is no guile. He said, I saw you when you were standing under that tree. You know what? Even though he was without guile, he didn't pick him. Every other person Jesus picked was doing something. God blesses your going out and your going and your coming in, not your stagnation. So wherever you are, start at your ground zero. Put your whole life into ground zero operations. Like I put the way I was going to the cyber cafe those days, you would think I was paid to do. Uh, I, our time is up. Our time is up. I can I can hear the music for the break playing in the background. But kindly just remind us what we're going to be talking about tomorrow and uh, social media handles and then we'll leave it at that. Tomorrow, we're going to deal with winning habits. What are some simple habits you can develop, you know, to help you? And follow me on Twitter, at Wale Akiemi. And, you know, Facebook, you either follow Wale Akiemi resource page or The Street University. But follow me on Twitter. You'll get information every day. Thank you. See Absolutely. you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. We're taking a very short commercial break. We will be right back. This is Full Circle with Mukali.